Hey, yeah, Cryptizens. Tonight's show. Near attacker loses Ethereum. Bitcoin advocates rebut House Democrats. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is May 2nd, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for this podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. We're here to bring you the crypto news analysis you need to start your day. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. So this is the kind of thing I would definitely like to hear more often. And it means somebody was getting attacked. And nobody even noticed until it was all over. On May 1st, the near protocol Rainbow Bridge was attacked. And you know the attacker was a hacker, he was a scumbag, because the whole thing involved tornado cash even before any money was stolen. Alex Shevenko is the CEO of Aurora Labs, and he is the one who told us this little story on Twitter. Now, first thing, he said the attack was stopped automatically, and as such, no funds were lost during the attack. So, the attack. It started off the way most hacks end, with tornado cash. See, on May 1st, the attacker dropped a contract that was meant to be the seed to become a valid Rainbow Bridge Relayer. Now, relayers are an important part of the bridge's infrastructure. They keep the light nodes updated. What they do is they check blockchain blocks from different networks. What they wanted to do was send fabricated light client blocks. Well, apparently the bridge's defenses took notice. The watchdogs could tell that the block was submitted and it wasn't actually in the near blockchain. Needless to say, that's not what was expected. So they created a challenge transaction and sent it to Ethereum. Now, what happened next is the challenge transaction fail. And the minor extractable value bots or MEV bots are employed to reorder, insert, and even censor transactions, whatever it needs to do to extract value from the bots. Now, these MEV bots are a little controversial. So with Ethereum miners and validators, they add block transactions according to the gas fee level paid. The actual transaction doesn't have to follow it. So you see what happens? You pay your fee, you send your transaction. Then MEV evaluates the transaction. It sees you're trying to push a fraudulent transaction and it takes the transaction fee and censors the transaction itself. So. The MEVBOTs not only defended the bridge from attack, they netted 2.5k in fees. Things are looking kind of mixed today. My portfolio is about evenly split between red and green. Slightly more red than green. So let's look at the numbers. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $1.74 trillion. That's a little better than the $1.73 trillion from yesterday. It's up 0.72% in 24. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin up half a percent, Ethereum up 1.72%, Tether, Binance Coin down 0.05%, and USDC. And the NFTs. The global NFT market cap is up over 10.46 billion. That's up from 10.45 billion yesterday. Sales volume is up 0.44% in 24 hours. According to Coin Market Cap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are Other Deed, followed by Mutant Apes, Bored Apes, Azuki, and Moonbirds. And keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. Bitcoin advocates rebut House Democrats. Sailor, Dorsey, and others sent a letter addressing House Democrats' misperceptions, shall we call them. So they pinned a missive to set the record straight and eliminate the FUD. See, what happened is, around the 20th of April, United States House of Representatives member Jared Huffman and 22 other lawmakers, they sent a letter to the Environmental Protection Agency. And in it, Huffman and other Democratic House members expressed that they have, quote, serious concerns around crypto mining in the United States and the alleged contributions of effects it has on greenhouse gas emissions. 
The allegation is that miners aren't acting in accordance with either the Clean Air or Clean Waters Acts. And this is something we talked about recently. You know, the practice of mining companies to, quote, reopen closed gas and coal facilities. An example is what happened in the state of New York. They've effectively killed proof-of-work mining in their state for the next two years. You know, Atlas Holdings bought a uh, decrepit, declining coal-fired electrical plant. They re-kitted it out, revamped it to burn natural gas. And then that natural gas gets converted into electricity, which gets converted into money, whether that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Zcash, Monero. Their letter said, quote, Cryptocurrency mining is poisoning our communities. The rapidly expanding cryptocurrency industry needs to be held accountable to ensure it operates in a sustainable and just manner to protect communities. They also said the consensus mechanics themselves are, quote, inherently energy inefficient. And so it was that Michael Saylor, Nick Carter, Darren Feinstein, the Bitcoin Mining Council, there were like 50 people signing this letter. And then that letter got sent to the head of the EPA. And its intent is to clean up some inaccuracies and misunderstandings about the reality of cryptocurrency mining in the United States in the year 2022. One example. At one point, the authors say the original letter, quote, confuses data centers with power generation facilities, which is true. And that distinction is important. Because the data centers that host miners, they buy their energy pre-produced off the open market, just like Amazon, just like Apple, just like Microsoft. And there's other issues, of course. The Democrats letter asks the EPA to make sure that miners comply with the, quote, foundational environmental statutes like the Clean Air Act or Clean Water Act. And then they go on to talk about things like noise pollution and electronic waste. The BMC letter attacks the Democrats' letter on eight points. Now, according to Saylor's group, they also point out that the original letter made an assertion that Bitcoin mining is polluting communities across the country. Now, they say that this assertion is incorrect. The Bitcoin Mining Council would say that Bitcoin mining produces no pollution. Power generation does. And that failure to recognize the difference comes into play more than once. And they're also attacking what they see as just plain old misinformation. Things like, quote, a single Bitcoin transaction could power the average U.S. household for a month. Come on. That said, the Bitcoin Mining Council did throw some shade at proof of stake, you know, as a response to the claim that proof of stake processing is less energy intensive. So they made a number of criticisms about proof of stake, and then they said the following. Given that proof-of-stake and proof-of-work are qualitatively different, it's misleading to refer to proof-of-stake as a more efficient form of proof-of-work, since it doesn't achieve the same thing. Now, another claim that the BMC letter attacks is one of e-waste. They called that, quote, straightforwardly false. The Democrats' letter cited a paper by Alex DeVry, by the way, an employee of the Deutsche Central Bank, so there's that. Anyway, this paper claimed that mining ASICs depreciate every 1.3 years. So they've used that to come up with a laughable claim that miners produce over 30,000 tons of electronic waste every year. The fact is, there is still an active market for old mining machines. S9s and S7s from Bitmain are still being used today, and they were released in 2015 and 2016, far, far longer ago than 1.3 years. Like I said, they took on the misinformation about Bitcoin transactions and the energy used. It will not power the average household for a month. The fact is, the ones consuming the energy are the miners that are chasing the coins through the consensus mechanism. They're also competing for transaction fees but most of their revenue comes from mining. So even looking at a per transaction energy cost, it's just utterly irrelevant. This letter was signed off on by some of crypto's most luminary of names. Sailor, of course, Dorsey, Fidelity Investments Senior Vice President Tom Jessup, Fordham Law School Professor Donna Reddle, 
Grayscale Investments, Michael Sonahan and Anthony Scaramucci. In closing, they said Bitcoin mining doesn't cause environmental concerns. Instead, it is, quote, the most important financial, economic, and accounting innovation in the history of humanity. And that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, comment, subscribe. Give us a review. Do you have questions or comments? Reach out and let us know. The email address is nick at cryptoovernighter.com. That's nick at cryptoovernighter.com. And check out my other podcast, Crypto in 5 Minutes. We have 41 educational podcasts, 5 minutes to explain one concept in crypto. And as always, may peace be.